Hi everyone. In this screencast, I want to look at objects and states. And the state of an object has got a lot to do with its appearance and sometimes the functionality of that particular state. So I've got some objects on the screen here and when you insert an object onto a slide it has what's called a normal state or the appearance of it uh, when you first insert it onto a slide. Now if I look at my button, when I hover over it it changes colour and I press down on it, it changes colour and then when I move off it, it's changed colour again. When I click on my shape, it changes to a different colour. I've got a picture here that goes from coloured to black and white when I click on it. I've got an illustrated character that when I just hover over him, it changes into the Incredible Hulk. And I also have a picture of some popcorn here that when I drag it into the square here, a little tick shows to show me that I've dropped it in the correct spot. So all of those uh, things you just saw then were all done using uh, states, different states of the same object. So let's take a look at, at how they work. I'll come down to this second slide where I've got all of the objects duplicated. And to view an object state, you need to go to the states tab, which is just next to the timeline tab. So firstly, choose your object on the screen. So I'll start with the button, click on the states tab. And you'll see the button has a number of built-in states and it's how buttons work when they're first inserted onto a slide. They have these inbuilt states because buttons are designed to be interacted with. The thing with the, the inbuilt button states is that generally they will be the same color as the initial normal state or they're based off that initial color. So they all look very much the same. But with a button, you might want to change the color of some of the states just to indicate that it is, for example, disabled or that it has been visited, just as a visual cue that it's different from the rest because then there's a reason for that. So to edit the states, the built-in states for our button, I can just click on the Edit States button here and then say I might come click on my visited state and change it to a different color. I usually like to change the disabled state as well to a different color so if some of my buttons are, are not working straight away that's a, again a visual indicator of that and then I'll just change the hover state to a different color as well. Now the thing with these inbuilt button states is that I don't have to trigger any of those that they will work if when I hover it will just change state or when I clicked on the button it will become visited or if I was going to use the disabled state that it, it wouldn't work. I don't necessarily need to trigger them. You can but these inbuilt states, these ones have the properties of, of those things built into it as well and I'll talk a bit more about that. That when, If I take my shape for example and the shape only has a normal state, okay so they don't, shapes don't have uh, inbuilt states, but I can create a visited state for my shape by clicking edit states and then I want to create a new state and if I just typed the word visited it wouldn't have the properties of that it would change state once it's clicked on but if you click on the drop down you can see there's a number of different types of states that if you choose a state from the drop down it will have those properties built into the state so for example if I choose visited I can add a visited state. Now when you create a state for an object it always creates a duplicate of the normal. So again I could change it to the visited state or it would change but it looks the same so I want to have it a different color to signify that it's different, it's been visited. Now because I've used that inbuilt visited state like I said I don't need to trigger it once I click on the shape it changes to visited. It becomes visited, I didn't need to trigger that. But there might be times if you, when you create a new state that it's not one from the drop down so we will need to trigger it and for an example of that might be this picture that I want to have it when I click on it it changes to the black and white color. So again I can click edit states, create a new state and this time I'll call it black and white and add it. I get a duplicate of the normal state again so I will just recolor it to grayscale and say done. Now, unlike the, the shape that I just created that changes when you click on it, the picture doesn't. So what I'll need to do to actually make that change state is I will need to create a new trigger to change the state of my flag to my new black and white custom state when the user clicks on it. And that will make it change from one color to the next. 
Now, for my character here, what I did there was uh, inserted an illustrated character, I created a new state, then I chose the hover state from the drop down, and I just removed in the hover state, I removed my illustrated character, substituted him with a picture of the Hulk, and because I chose hover from the list, the drop down list, it had the hovering properties that when I hover over the character in the normal state, it'll change to the Hulk in the hover state. The other state that I had, and is a good one for when you are creating drag and drop interactions, is that I can create a state for, for my drag items that when I drop it uh, on the correct or incorrect uh, drop target, we can get a visual indicator if I put it in the right place or not. So what I'm going to do for my popcorn is that when I drop it onto the shape here, that it will show a tick to show that it's in the right spot. So again, I'm going to create a state and a new state. And this time from the drop down, there's a couple of states here called drop correct and incorrect. So I'm just going to use the drop correct state today and say add. And again, I've got it, it looks the same. So on my drop correct state, I'm going to insert a shape which of a tick. And I'll just recolor it so that it's green. And then I can say done. Now, the thing with the drop correct state is um, that what I'll need to do is I will need to trigger in a sense that I'll need to just trigger that this drag item needs to be dropped on that drop target and to change the state. So, because in Storyline it doesn't know where the correct drop area is, so I'll need to trigger this one. So I can change the state of my popcorn to my drop correct state when an object, and that's the popcorn, is dropped onto the square target. And then OK. So if I preview this slide out, when I drag my popcorn, drop it on the square, it changes. So if I had a couple of drop targets, I could have an incorrect drop incorrect state if I put it in the wrong place. So it's, it's a good way of just giving that uh, that that visual feedback that, that you've put the drag item in the correct or the incorrect place. Another thing with states too is generally when you change the state, especially when you trigger to change the state from one to another, it will stay in the state that you've changed it to until you put on another trigger to change it back or to change it to something else. And finally, there's a couple of objects that don't have states. One of them is, I've got two objects here, a circle and a tick, and if I group the objects, you'll see that group, I've got a group, but group objects, there is no state because they are made up of a number of smaller objects, so there's no state for them. And also videos don't have a state either, so they're, um, they're an object that doesn't have their own state, but everything else has got at least a normal state, and you might be able to create other states. And one final thing you can do with your states is, and I'll and this is where I, I use it for buttons sometimes, is that I can actually set from the state panel what I want the initial state to be. So because I've got a button and all of these states created, I can set the initial state of my button, say, to disabled. So it will have those disabled properties. And then at some point I might want to change it back to normal so that it'll work again. So I can add a trigger for that. So, and you can also, if you wanted to start your objects off in the hidden state, so they won't actually appear on the screen initially, again, until something else happens and you want to trigger them to, to appear. So that's a quick overview on states. Um, have a play with them, have, uh, have a look at the different states for your object, have a go at trying states on, on objects. And one of the one final tip before I finish up is that the good thing about using states on an object is that if you move the objects around the slide is that the state will go with them. So the 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 state is because it's connected to the object moves with the object as well as opposed to creating the same effects say using layers or some other way that if you move the object and you use the layer the, you'd have to change it on the layer as well, but using the state means that the object uh, and the states are connected, so they will uh, move together. All right, that's it from me. Uh, 
to have a look at states and give them a go and uh, they can certainly um, uh, add a lot to your project by, by changing an object's state. See you next time.